Hello everyone and welcome to Armstrong in the Loop podcast. I'm your host, Seth Prentice. Today I am honored to be joined by the Butler County Chamber's first ever Executive Director, Jordan Grady. Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey Seth, thanks for having me today. Jordan, I know you and I go uh, back this past year, we were both in uh, Leadership Butler County, had a great experience there, and while being uh, members of the program, uh, you had the honor to be named Butler Chamber's first ever executive director. Talk to me about how that all came to be and your excitement to be the first ever. Uh, So for the last, well, it took me about three or four months to get actively involved in the chamber once I got my uh, job with Alliance for Nonprofit Resources. Um, I instantly joined the Butler County Young Professionals, uh, and then within probably four or five months, I was appointed chair of that. Uh, And by default, the chair of the Young Professionals sits on the chamber board to report to the board of directors on the activities of of the Young Professionals group. Um, And then we basically just saw an opportunity. I talked to a co-worker who's also on the chamber board about it, uh, and we pitched it to Stan and the executive board, and uh, the rest is history. So right place, right time type of deal. No, for sure. Now, I know Stan's role is uh, very critical to the operation of the Butler Chamber for as long as he's done it. What does this role as executive director add on to what Stan's already been doing? Uh, It's going to help aid in getting new memberships, but also keeping the current members happy, uh, member retention, event coordination, event planning, uh, expanding our event offerings. Um, and also building partnerships uh, with other chambers in our region. Uh, those are the, my main focus points of my job. Uh, and I think I can really do a good job of adding that. And also it, it allows Stan to free up some of his time to focus on other operational things that help the chamber you know, move. The, uh, th- this area is booming, as you know. Uh, Southern Butler County has become an explosion for the past 10, 15, 20 years. And I know the Chamber has actively tried to be engaged with this part of the county. Um, What are some of the plans that you have, not only for the rest of 2019, but 2020 and beyond? Well, Seth, I'm I'm glad you asked me that, uh, because we do have some big news regarding Southern Butler County. Um, Within the next couple weeks, we will officially open our second satellite office in Cranberry Township in the Township Building. Uh, so we are very excited to, to get in there, uh, and obviously this, this area is booming, as you mentioned, and we have to do our best job to continue to support the businesses down here and keep up with the growth and also aid and enhance more growth in the area. Uh, so by being down here and have a presence down here, we hope that that really helps us you know, move businesses forward. Now, with that office, is it going to be manned uh, on a five-day basis? Are you going to be there a couple uh, hours a day? How's it going to operate? Uh, to start, I'm going to be down there probably a couple couple days a week. Okay. Um, but we're, we're going to get some interns here soon, uh, for, for marketing interns mainly. Um, and then they will be in, down here. So the, the goal is to have it manned five days a week. Uh, but until we can get the, the manpower in place, we'll be there a couple times a week and as needed by appointments. Uh, but we are just so excited to get down here and have a presence. Uh, where are you getting your interns from? Uh, Slip Rock University and Butler Community College. Oh, wow. B- Butler County all the way. That's awesome. <laughs> Keeping it in the county, which is fantastic. Um, so where is your uh, vision for the growth for the Butler County Chamber now that you know, you're establishing a location here in Cranberry area? Um, you know, you've the chamber created this position, you know, that you're running with, you know, where, what's next? Uh, my, my main focal point in 2020 is going to be creating more of an awareness of the Butler County Chamber of Commerce in Southern Butler County, mainly Cranberry Township. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's two chambers that service this area um, and the other chamber does just a wonderful job and, and we would just like to work with them and aid in them and, and let businesses know that there are several entities working on their behalf. And I know in our area we also have, you know, the Beaver County, we have uh, the Elwood City Chamber. I know that you're trying to get actively involved with uh, any of the local neighboring chambers as well. Uh, Are there partnerships that you find or have found that make sense that um, might not have been an opportunity in the past? Uh, yeah, so, so we have worked with both the Pittsburgh North and the Beaver, uh, and even the Elwood uh, in the past. I just would like to ex- expand on, on those partnerships. Uh, I met with the Beaver Chamber yesterday, 
Uh, they're going through uh, some executive leadership changes. Their their current executive director is one of the favorites for a Beaver County County Commissioner. Uh, so they're going to go through some changes. And I just think, you know, you take it right down Freedom Road and you walk a minute, you know, you're in Beaver County. So I, I definitely want to strengthen that relationship with, with them because um, you know, Beaver County is also booming with the Cracker Plant and other things that are happening there. Uh, so that's one of the partnerships that I, I really want to strengthen. Uh, in terms of new partnerships, I uh, we're actively looking at partnerships with the Allegheny Conference. Mm. Um, we just were down there yesterday for a meet and greet with 16 other communities that are trying to get into the Allegheny Conference. I'm not sure as of right now just how beneficial that'll be, but I'm new to this, and I, I'm sure it'll be very important for for the chamber to have a presence in the Allegheny Conference, uh, mainly because it's going to help us with grant writing, tax credits. It's going to help us assist the CDC with some of the developments that are happening in Butler County. So that's one of the new partnerships in 2020 that we're really working to uh, strengthen. Uh, and then we just got to continue to build on the, the ones we have. With We have a great working relationship with our Tourism Bureau. We have uh, a working relationship with Beaver County, which we're actively trying to strengthen. We're trying to strengthen the wall in Pittsburgh North. I believe that the, our two chambers should definitely work together more. Um, and then also Elwood, I think we need to work more with Elwood and, and Lawrence County. We have an event already scheduled in 2020 with the Lawrence County Chamber. Uh, so cross county collaboration is key, uh, but also building, continue to build partnerships with uh, our members. You know, Armstrong is obviously a, a, a great chamber member. We'd like to continue to build that relationship with Armstrong. Same with, you know, the Eagle, the media outlets. Uh, so those are just some of the things that we're looking to do in 2020. That's awesome. Uh, I do know uh, something that you mentioned. The CDC, which has been active on this uh, Route 228 corridor expansion, and you know, I'm sure you're aware that Cranberry has you know, been uh, carrying the flag that they have more people coming here, commuting into Cranberry to work, and this place is going to explode. I know the CDC is actively trying to find ways to bring more businesses in, and that has to be helping with what you're able to do to encourage these companies to come into the area. It absolutely does. Uh, we're very fortunate. Our, our CDC is just top notch. Uh, the the executive directors, you know, engineering background, uh, very personable, um, great speaker. We have great leadership in our CDC. We're, we're very lucky. At, in that aspect, um, and actually, as as part of our, our move to kind of get down more into Southern Butler County, we're actually going to be putting on an event called the Intersection of Progress, uh, and it's all about the updates on what's happening along 228, 19, Route 19, Route 228, and even Freedom Road. Because if if you've been down Freedom Road recently, they've made major changes leading into Beaver County. Um, so we'll be having like a State of the Union type event on January 15th. Um, at 11.30 a.m., it's a, it'll be a free luncheon, and we'll have the supervisors and township representatives from uh, Adams, Cranberry, Jacksons, and Seven Fields. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, we'll be getting reservations out for that probably in the next week or two. We're going to be capped at 250, and we absolutely expect for it to, to sell out. And I'm guessing this is going to take place in the Cranberry area? Yes, it'll be at the Re Regional Learning Alliance. They have a nice room. They'll have a nice catered lunch. Um, you know, we, we've lined up the sponsorships already. Um, so everything's looking really good there. That's awesome. And uh, I'm sure that people can find out more information about this on your newly created Facebook page. They can, yes. Uh, we'll be adding the event again probably within the next week or two. Um, and then also our, our 2020 calendar is complete. Okay. So that'll be uploaded into our website here in the next couple weeks as well. Um, you know, we're, we're moving forward and that, that's good. I know one of the events that uh, your Young Professionals group uh, kind of owns each and every year is your Halloween costumes for kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's the end of the end of the month and Halloween's here. How many costumes were you, uh, the Young Professionals, were they able to collect and uh, distribute to those in, that just need a costume for the year? Yeah, so this year, so each year, this this was the fourth year of the, of the Ghouls for Good costume drive and each year it has experienced some growth. This year we collected 400 costumes and we distributed 200 to kids in our area in need. 
And uh, this is the first year that we provided every child that's in the backpack program a uh, voucher, uh, as well as every child that's uh, working with CYS. So every single one got a voucher this year, and 200 were redeemed. So that event just continues to grow in popula uh, popularity. And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't make that happen without some of the community partners that we have. Um, people collecting costumes, you know, Armstrong puts a bin out. There's several organizations that put bins out. Uh, so really, without the help and support of the community, that, that costume drive wouldn't be as big a success as it is. Uh, so I know recently uh, you've had a couple awards given out to local businesses in Butler. Do you want to expand on that a little more? Yeah, so our, our uh, Butler Downtown Group um, is restarting their annual meeting, and they, they're giving out three awards. Uh, the business of the year is going to be Mystic Moons Antique. Uh, and what they do is, is very unique. They have about 50, maybe more, local artists, vendors, and they allow them to come up and set up shop and sell out of the Mystic Moon storefront. Uh, and the owner of that's very active. She starts events. She's doing the Witches' Day Out uh, this, this weekend. Uh, so that's very deserving. Um, and then also the Spring Hill Suites in Marriott got the Economic Impact Award in downtown Butler. Uh, and obviously that has just been great for... The city, uh, it's bringing a lot of people in. It's keeping a lot of money here. It's helping the restaurants. It's just had a, a domino effect of economic development. Um, and then take it on a bigger scale of things. You know, United Plate Glass just got recognized as one of the uh, smartest 50 companies in our region. And if you look at that list, Sheets is on it. I mean, there's some, some big companies. So for United Plate Glass right here in Butler for, for as long as they've been in business um, they've just experienced extreme growth and that's awesome for them to be recognized I know that there's some new businesses coming into the, the Butler area as well on Route 8 uh, are you able to expand on more of what those will be or do we uh, stay tuned for following announcements to come uh, so yeah there is some developments uh, at the Greater Butler Mart on Route 8 there um, which is great there used to be a gas station that was just an eyesore for so many years. Uh, it is officially torn down and gone. Uh, and it, it appears that a Taco Bell will be coming into to that location. Um, and then there's a, a, a grocery chain that's approached the uh, developer on, on that building. And as of right now, that's kind of, no one's really sure what it is, uh, but we'll give you getting a, another grocery store. Obviously Friedman's was there and was a staple business in that plaza for years and years and years so to get a grocery store back in that area is just great no it is and you know i know everything you're doing everything stan's doing and uh, all the different partnerships that the chamber has throughout not only butler county but your neighboring counties you guys are making a difference and we greatly appreciate the work that all of you are doing and as well as uh your short period of time you're making an impact well thank you i appreciate that well, thank you again, Jordan, for being here with us today. Uh, we'll catch up with you uh, down the road and hopefully have more announcements to come from the chamber. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop. Are you enjoying Armstrong in the Loop podcast? Great news. All past and current episodes are available on popular streaming apps and websites. Search Armstrong in the Loop podcast and subscribe today.